Another great question that we got was from our video of Crokinole Coaching Challenge Jeremy versus Mac. 82 Melmar asked why we were playing with eight buttons each instead of 12 buttons each. So in this video, we are going to dig in and talk about how many buttons or discs or pucks you should be using when you play the great game of Crokinole. We're going to talk about singles, doubles, and then we're going to dig into some variations of gameplay and how many buttons you should use for those. Learning about these is going to help you add even more fun and variety to your Crokinole fun and variety and repetitiveness. That was close. Apparently Mac thinks he calls the shots now and we're leaving that blooper in, so uh, how many buttons should you use to play Crokinole? Let's take a look. Jeremy Tracy here of Tracy Crokinole Boards. If you find this video fun and helpful, please go ahead and give us a like, a comment, and a share. It helps support our channel, and most importantly, it helps create global awareness of the great game of Crokinole. Today's video, we're going to cover how many buttons to use when you're playing doubles, when you're playing singles, and then we're going to dig into things like three player Crokinole when you play 2v1, or three and four player singles. With each one, we're going to look at NCA rules, our recommendations, and then we're going to talk about the things that you can consider when you're deciding what are the right host rules for you and yours. Here are the official NCA rules for when you play doubles or what is known as 2v2. So in this case, what you're going to do is you're going to sit across the table from your partner and you will each have six buttons of the same color. Now your opponents are going to sit opposite to you facing each other and they will each have six buttons of a different color. Now our recommendation is that when you play at home to follow those same NCA rules of playing with 12 buttons per team and therefore 6 buttons per player. As much as we recommend following those rules, I'd also encourage you to experiment or at least be open to trying different number of buttons. Let's say you are playing with little kids or someone who has a super short attention span, you may want to try less buttons, say 8 buttons per team so each player has 4 discs. That will keep the rounds and therefore the game's just faster and snappier and perhaps more engaging for that younger crowd. The official NCA rules for playing singles or 1v1 state that you will each have eight buttons of a different color. So you will sit on one side of the table and have eight buttons, and your opponent will sit on the opposite side of the table and they will have eight buttons of a different color. Now, I assume that that is where 82 Melmar's question came from. I'm guessing that they are used to or they grew up playing with 12 buttons aside even when they were playing singles. That's how I actually grew up playing. My many years I played that way until I was introduced to the NCA. That is how I played. And that is how a lot of people that I've talked to about Crokinole, that's how they grew up playing. And let me be super duper explicitly clear, playing singles with 12 buttons each is not wrong. It is just not what you're going to see when you show up to and play in an NCA singles tournament. Now just like in doubles, I suggested and encouraged you to experiment with different numbers of buttons, I'd say the same thing for singles. Some people prefer less buttons, like eight buttons or maybe even less than that, again, to keep those rounds snappy and fast and dynamic and fast moving, where other people prefer to play with 12 buttons because for a couple of reasons, one, it means you get to enjoy the game even longer, but another reason is that if you fall behind in a round, more buttons allows you more opportunity to catch up in that round. So again, it is completely up to you. If I come to your host to play Crokinole and you say, Jeremy, when we play singles, we play nine buttons a side. I'm gonna say, cool, let's play. And then you say, and when we play doubles, it's 10 buttons a team. I'm gonna say, great, game on. Your hosts, your rules. The rest of the examples we're going to look at in this video are not things you're likely ever to see at an NCA tournament. Therefore, there are no official NCA rules as to how many buttons these variations are to be played with. What we are going to share with you is our experience of what has worked best for these different formats. So you're going to learn different formats and learn our recommendations of how many buttons to use. 
We did a blog post which is up on our website that goes into great detail of the variations of how to play Crokinole when you've got three players wanting to play. If you're the type of person who prefers to read, I'd encourage you to check out that blog post. We'll put a link to it in the description box below. But we're gonna dig into it here, and the way it works is that when you play three-player Crokinole, 2v1, one player is going to sit and have 12 buttons of a color. And their two opponents are going to sit here and here, and they're each going to have six buttons of a different color. So let's say you are the person who is the one, and you're playing against the two. You will sit here with 12 buttons, you will shoot, then the person to your left will shoot, and then in essence you are shooting on behalf of your imaginary partner who sits over there. So you shoot, and then the person to your right shoots, then you shoot again. The most common question I get when I tell people about 2v1 Crokinole is, do you have to get up and run around the table and sit and shoot from over there? No you don't, you actually you have to stay in this chair, and that becomes part of the strategy because those two will often try to hide on the far side of the board and make it difficult for you to hit. But that's the way it works. You've got 12, so you shoot, they shoot, you shoot on your imaginary friend's behalf, that person shoots, and so on. So basically, it is doubles, you're just missing a player. Our recommendation for 2v1 Crokinole is that you stick to 12 buttons per team. So it is exactly like competitive doubles. Again, you're just missing that one player. As always, feel free to mix it up and play with any number of buttons you'd like. When you play three player singles, how it works is each player will have their own color. So three players, three colors. And the valid shot rules work just like regular Crokinole when if the board is open, if there are no opponent's buttons on the board, you need to, you must play to the middle. And if there are any opponent's buttons on the board when you shoot, the rule is in order for it to be a valid shot, you have to make contact with an opponent's button. The most common question you will hear about this format of play is, are there rules about which opponent's button? Like let's say your opponent who's sitting to your left has a red button on the board and your opponent who's sitting to your right has a black button that's, you know, the red button is in the 15, the black is out in the five. Are there any rules about which one you have to hit? Absolutely not. There are no rules that say you have to hit the higher point value. There are no rules about hitting the more recently shot button. None of that. It's whatever is better for you. And what will often happen in three player singles is if it most likely players are going to go after the button of their opponent who is winning at the time. So if one player is way ahead, the other two will tend to gang up and always knock the red buttons off the board, for example. The way we always used to play three player singles was eight buttons per player. So this player would have eight of this color, eight of another color, eight of another color. That was until I attended the Accelerate Crokinole Tournament of 2019. It was some of the top players from the NCA all got together in Jason Beerling's basement and we played with a number of variations of Crokinole. We definitely had some host rules in action that day. And if you want to see this for yourself, check out the fantastic content on the Crokinole Center channel. Specifically, what I'm referring to is when we played four player singles. So in that case, four players each having their own color of discs. Same rules apply as the three player singles. When we played that day, each player had six buttons of a color. So it was six, 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 and six. For whatever reason, playing with six buttons rather than eight, I just found the game so much more fun and engaging, and it was just quick rounds and really enjoyable. So now, that is how we play three player singles. Six buttons, six buttons, six buttons. Again, there are no hard and fast rules about this because the NCA, these are not NCA styles of play, so it's a matter of you deciding what works best in your house. The NCA rule for doubles is 12 buttons per team, six buttons per player. But at your house, your rules. The NCA rule for singles play is eight buttons per player. But at your house, your rules. For 2v1 Crokinole, our recommendation is 12 buttons per team. But at your house, your rules. There's a theme here. When you play either three or four player singles, our recommendation is six buttons per player, but again, at your house, you guessed it, your rules. But the always and forever, infinite and interminable, hard and fast, inexpugnable, and completely non-negotiable rule, no matter where you play, is 
Have fun playing the greatest game on earth. I wonder. We're still rolling, by the way. Pause that. I assume that. Say that three times real fast. Another. <laughs> you threw me. Another great question. <clears throat> nah, it's fine. Smashed! Here are the <clears throat> puberty buttons. Buttons. Disc. I thought.